It's the magic podcast for the average plane walker. Sweet. Oh, here it is. Do we do we need to? Uh, yeah, we do. I mean, we yeah, have we to say to. something. Yeah, we got to. We have 100%. to. Here it is. Guys and gals, folks and Faye, this is it. This is what we've all been waiting for. The this, return of yeah. the Lightning Helix. This card, um, I wholehearted, wholeheartedly believe that this card alone will put just high control on the map again. I think mm-hmm. this card alone has that much power, that much weight. And if you've never played oh, yeah. Lightning Helix in a <laughs> format, in standard, because I, I came into Magic during Alara. So this was Me too. this was in star. This was in standard. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. This card and, and prior to Modern Horizons one and two, uh Lightning Helix was a staple in modern. And oh, now yeah. we get Lightning Helix and Pioneer. And I think that's the big one to think about yeah. as well. Um Well and because of that, like right, so like we look at damage cards, but one of the things that I always consider when I'm evaluating something like this or an effect like this is what is the life death or what is the life delta? And what I mean by that is, okay, it deals three to you, but I gain three life. So the delta is six, right? And that has a significant impact on the value of a card because if it only deals two to you, but I gain one, the delta is one. Right, but this is a delta of six. Like that buys me two freaking turns, probably. Right, yeah. and as you pointed out, it's been nearly almost seventeen years since we've yeah. seen this card mm-hmm. in it's been a very long time. A very, very long, long time. time. Yeah, like that's longer than my children have been alive. Right, yeah. <laughs> that's a big deal. Um, yeah, Lightning Helix is definitely <laughs> going to be a staple in standard and this card yes. is going to you're you're gonna you're gonna die by this card a lot like a lot let's say it, this card is going to end up killing you probably a few times and you in like you're yeah. you're going to be expecting it but there's nothing you can do about it unless you're yeah. playing counter spells or like and even if it doesn't kill you with its three damage the delta of six that it provides will right. turn the tide right and if i play two of them in a row that's a delta of 12 yeah, you know, the, and the then you hit me for four. Yeah, yeah the opposite, the opposite is ridiculous. ridiculous. The fact yeah. that, like, I, I don't think, um, because for some reason, this card is just getting brushed brushed up on, and I understand why. It's because, like, if you've been playing Magic long enough, you know what it does. You don't need to talk about it. Yep. But there's a lot of new players to Magic, period. So I think it's worth talking about yep. just how good this is, because you got Lightning Bolt for red, and then you have mm-hmm. uh, what gave you three life for white. I don't remember what it was. But whatever it was, for two mana... We've seen a lot over the years. That. Yeah, and so... Yeah. Being able on turn two to bolt a creature and gain three life... Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, it, it's saving you so you can set up as a control player. You usually yes. use Lightning Helix to, uh, to sustain your life so you can set up your board state, set up your lands, get your card draw. You don't necessarily use Lightning Helix for the face as a control player. As a control player. Unless you have a yeah. way to recur it, if you have a way to recur it, yes. like be it like you know, Isochron set yeah, or whatever. You know. Yeah, I mean? usually these hit creatures, right? Like these right. are good creature removal cards that also gain you three life in combat. Yeah, and so I know it stabilizes people, you really well. Mm-hmm. And the thing about this card is that people are like, "Well, I have go for the throat. I have cut down. I can just make sure I kill it. Things like that." But you're gaining three life. You cannot yeah, but both of those either. cards are in black, right? Like, go for the throne. Exactly. And, yeah, like, this, this, like you said, puts Jeskai Control in a really good position. Mm-hmm. But and then not that, that, we, also, we, also, we also have uh, the, the, the Elephant Planeswalker. Yep. Like, imagine, yep. imagine like, being able to uh, rip this off with Discovery. You, you mm-hmm. bolt something for three, and then you hit them for Two, and then you gain five. Yep. yep. Like that's just ridiculous. That's really good. <laughs> yeah, it's very good. So, well, and I've got a I've got a buddy that's building this into Boros right now. Boros uh, prowess. Mm-hmm. Poof, let me tell you what this and and War Leaders Call, oh, yeah. which we did not talk about, 
but War Leader's Call is a really good card. You you throw this in with War Leader's Call and a bunch of other Boros Prowess cards. Yeah. So like for whatever reason, we got a lot of cards to talk about. But this I have is no this idea how we good. I, we didn't both agree on it. I don't know. Or you didn't throw it on the I, list. Or I think it got cut by one of us. I yeah, and uh, like this is a good three drop for any Boros deck. Because uh, whenever a creature enters the battlefield under control, it deals one damage to each opponent. If you combine that with the Ohir, uh, the red Ohir card from Lost Caverns of Ixalan, whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, it deals four damage to each opponent. Like it just it can run away with the game really freaking quickly. Um, so, and then you combine that with uh, Lightning Helix. Um, you know, you're talking. Deltas of 12, 14, 16 damage over the turn of or over the course of two or three turns. Like it gets it gets really ridiculous. Yeah. So my my Jeff Guy control is gonna be running the Lightning Helix along with the Elephant Planeswalker. I can't remember his name. British Curious? I, I don't know. I don't have it yeah, yeah. right here. Yeah, you uh, pull. with him and then uh War Leader Call. But my finisher is to play Invasion of New Phyrexia and have all my tokens mm-hmm. come in and deal one damage to the opponent. Yep. That's, that's my that's my finisher because if I put out eight Good tokens, one. that's eight damage. But if I have two yep. one leader calls out, that's sixteen damage. Plus I have lightning yes. helixes. At that point, then I'm going to helix you in the face because now you're yep. close to death. So, or the helix got you close enough that just them entering the battlefield the kills you. Correct, exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's why with a lo- lightning helix and this allows just guy control to possibly be a thing. And I cannot mm-hmm. wait to uh, to play. I haven't played Jeff Guy Control since uh, Abyssin, like OG Abyssin. When we yep. had uh, when we had Pillar of Flame, and then we had Five yep. Drop Mono Blue Tamio. During those yep. days, we had Quicken, and we had Supreme Verdict. Th- that's when I played Jeff Guy Control. It was back then. Yeah. Um, well, since we're on Lightning Helix, let's roll into No More Lies because I think this is the other card. That is going to bust Just Guy Control way open. It's really good. It's good card. I mean, it's 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 a what? Uh, not spell Pierce. What's the one I'm thinking of? Mana leak. Mana leak. It's mana leak for one that exiles. Yeah, but it's like mana leak dissipate. That's yeah. what I'm trying to get. It, at. It's like the good hybrid between dissipate and mana leak, mm-hmm. all stable to one card. Cost one yeah. less, and like. Even Azorius control is gonna super benefit from this card. Oh yeah. So one thing that I'm actually thankful that Wizards did was they made this an uncommon and not a rare. Me too. Because I could easily see them pumping this to a rare. If this gets reprinted somewhere, they would pump it up to a rare. I could easily see them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think the reason it's where it's at is because of the power creep. Honestly, they they've they've kind of scooted and booted everything up so high that like this card where it would be a rare five years ago is is consigned to the uncommon slot, right? Isn't that crazy? Like this, yeah. like because yeah. we're, we're OGs and Magic right here for this long, almost twenty years. This normally to us looks like a rare. Yeah, it would it would have been seven to ten years ago. This would have been a rare card. Yeah. Because it shoehorns you into two colors, right? And you remember, like, being on just two colors, like, even going to two colors was, was a hard sell when it wasn't hybrid mana or you didn't have, you know, a colorless option in there somewhere. Like, shoehorning yeah. yourself into just white and blue, that would have been detrimental because the land base was bad. The meta was not geared for that. This right. card would have not been as good seven to ten years ago. But this is a really good card. Like just straight up right now, even with the power creep, countering something for three for you know, they don't pay three. So like look, two mana, I counter your Atroxa and exile that hoe. Yeah. Come on, man. <laughs> like, get out of here. It's a good card. Yeah. Yeah, it's so I think this is gonna prop up cards like um, Lightning Helix in the Jeskai control decks. Yeah, Jeskai control is definitely gonna be a uh... A deck to be uh to be looking out for and reckoned with. Yep. Agreed. Um long goodbye. Uh, this card. No, we got this one. 
Not on my watch. Oh, you want to do that one next? Okay. Well, not a, on my watch. I love this card. Did... And... Oh, no, you're right. No, number three. Get out of here. Tell me I'm wrong. Sorry. Get out of here. Dang. Um, okay. It's really good. It's really good. Look, here's the deal on this card. Uh, I love any card that says it can't be countered because it says screw blue. Um, I know. I hate then... it. <laughs> Destroy target creature or planeswalker with mana three or less. What that says to me is, uh, you know, and you you mentioned like Rakdos mid range is a problem. Yeah, you're right. And this this card makes it a bigger problem because that archetype thrives by getting into turn four, turn five, turn six, and just overwhelming you. Right. Well, now you can't even get under it. Because the creatures and planeswalkers you play early in the game, I'm just going to get rid of them and you can't stop me. Yeah. But the other thing that I really like about this card is because it's creature or planeswalker, mana value three or less, it deals with all of the man lands. All of those really good man lands that people are playing, like the Restless Cottage or Restless Anchorage, right? Like these cards that, are, that have a little bit of evasion or one sided card value. Uh, okay, you got a food token and I removed your land. For two mana, right? You pour four mana to animate this thing into a land, swing for four, I remove it for two, you got a food token. Cool, you're gonna gain three life and I'm gonna I'm gonna like come at you with some something else, right? So yeah. this card right here, oh my god, it's so good. It's so good. And we didn't even put the white black one on here on our talk list. I know. But... You, you told me to take something out, but the, I mean that one, we'll talk about it. I don't care. But anyway, <laughs> um so to me this card just says this is a long goodbye to Rafine. This just says kill Rafine. Yeah. Because 100%. It, is, because it doesn't give it Can't be countered. Reward. Yeah. Nope. So this is like, I think because... Mm, bye so, bye. So Ward is so powerful or so relevant that this card gets around all of this. So all of your disguise or morph, whatever you want to call mm -hmm. them, all those cards, this card will get around it now. Because yeah. I assume, if I remember right, morph, a morph card has zero mana value. Is that correct? Until it's flipped. Uh, yes, yes, the mana value of zero. Because the, yeah. the face card is not public knowledge, so I would assume the knowledge Correct. of the public would be zero. Yeah. So this will get yeah. around all of those. I think it's uh, two. Guys. I think the mana value is two. I'd have to double check. It's two or less. It's two or zero. But either way, this card hits that. Two. Sure. But the card hits yeah. it, uh, no matter what. This also gets rid of a uh, Telerian Terror. You no longer yeah. have to worry about the ward. Um, yep. Like, it, it's really it's like you feel you feel safe with Ward until they print something like this. Yes. You know. Um. I actually, no. This can't get rid of Telerian Terror because no, Terror not the is like terror. a seven drop. I'm 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 just thinking of Ward creatures, and that's what first came into my mind. Yeah, because so Terror is is seven, it's seven but drop. yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but it, I mean, it deals with. A lot of relevant things. Yeah, it gets around Ward, but more importantly, right? Like, this is an easy sideboard out in game two if you're going against something where it's bad, right? Like, you can just be like, oh, I'm going to take out my three copies of Long Goodbye and put in my three copies of Go for the Throat, right? So, it, it really, like, the value of this card being in the game one board is really good, especially yeah. in the hyper aggro meta that we're looking at right now in standard. And then it's super easy to just sideboard out. You're like, oh, that's an easy choice. I'm just going to take this out. Now I'm going to put in this other thing that hits all of the other stuff, right? Because they're not playing a lot of things I care about on turn one, two, and three. Yeah. And right now, I, the only the only walker I can think of is um, Kaido. Nobody's really playing Kaido as much anymore. Um, no, they're not. I, I did see a list good. last week where they were playing two of Kaido in the main, and I think a lot of people are sleeping on that card because the fact that he gains you the card advantage the turn he comes out, yeah, he just got forgotten. That's like what we are talking about with the three rotation. There are a lot of good cards out there that just get like discarded or slept on. Uh, but there was somebody, I don't remember if it was a pizza box open or something like that, but they played a couple copies of him in the main board, and like he went the distance. Yeah. So I used to play Kaido a uh, little 
off off to the side chat, but I used to play Kaido a lot when uh, the D and D set, the original like mm -hmm. uh, dungeon set, was in standard, and uh, I was playing Junji, I was playing the Beholder, mm -hmm. a bunch of things. But I was able to control the board state to where I can get Kaido. Like I didn't minus him. Everybody always minuses, but I just kept plus him. Plus no. plus him. And plus then I got to his, I got to his ult, and then like yeah. every you deal damage, you just go grab a creature pump. Like hardly anybody gets that far because they're just like, I need, I need this unblockable creature. It's like no, if you can get to that point, no, it's an emblem that you just win the game essentially if you, as long as you create yeah. damage. Um, yeah, yeah I, I think Kaido is just like kind of forgotten because of the card pool is just so big, but. Back to long goodbye. This is going to be a um, scary card as a control player. I am definitely kind of scared about this, uh, but at the same time, I'm really glad that I picked up all of my obscure interceptors because obscure interceptor can go ahead and kind of pseudo counter long goodbye. You know. Yep, kind of can. And my last note on this card is: I really feel like we missed an opportunity because we could have called it long kiss goodbye and then had gina davis pseudo on this card am i wrong change my mind i mean yeah Wait. if you're old you you know <laughs> if you're not they're well, like all right first of all first of all one of the coolest action movies ever made all right don't hate on it don't sleep on it if you ain't seen it pull it up on your just watch and go play that movie right like we missed an opportunity okay did we both? Oh, I like that we card? both like this card. Yes, we did. Okay. Yes, we did. So I've I've seen some other creators kind of talk down about this card, but I think the thing that's forgotten about this is that there's a period right here. That period alone means that I don't have to wait for them to cast something to finish this card to counter something. I can just right. put the counters on there and be good. Yeah. You know? Here's the other thing about the period is X can be zero. Yeah. Right? So you can put zero one one counters on a target creature you control. Period. Then counter up to one target spell unless the control of pays mana equal to the greatest power among creatures you control. Yeah. If you already have a creature with power greater than what they can counter or pay the mana for, you can put zero counters yeah. on a creature. That's like, this is just a versatile card. And if you're already sitting on Bant or Simic, and as we all know, Simic gets a bad rap and the short end yeah. of the stick, this is a decent card at an uncommon rate. This is one of the best Simic counter spells, aside from Thrilled Mythic, that Simic yep. has ever got. Yeah, I agree. It's, it's dealt with the power aspect. And I mean, if and you're, if instant you're, speed. Yeah, if you're a homeboy like me and you're playing a uh, Averbrook caretaker, I mean, Averbrook caretaker. She's just gonna keep getting bigger and bigger, you know. And one yep. one thing that's really cool is if you are playing band, let's say uh, they they cast something and they have, um, you know, three mana available, and then you cast this, like, or you would go and and do um, and you and you have a three three. So mm -hmm. uh, you cast um, uh, Wandering Emperor, give your creature a plus one plus one counter, making it a four, and then you cast Repulsive Mutation to counter it for zero still, for two mana. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. you're, still, you're still able to pump, even if you, um, like, you could put the, the four mana from the, from the Emperor into the X of Repulsive Mutation, but why would I do yeah. that when I could play a Planeswalker, pump, because I only needed one more mana for that, and still at yeah. six mana put two threats on the board and counter your spell. Like Absolutely. That's a better play. So I think the versatility of this card is like highly underrated. Highly yeah, underrated. I agree. I, I like, like the uh the the versatility of it and yeah. I like that because of that period you don't have to put something on it. Correct. And that's where I kind of think of this. Um, Remember Repudiate? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This was highly yep. underrated. Not Replicate, but Agreed. Repudiate. Repudiate was Stifle in Standard. And nobody played yep. it but me. I played the crap out of Repudiate. And I used yep. it. Back then, we didn't, as many, we didn't have as many ETBs. We had mostly walkers that were going off. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so 
I would yep. I would stop the walkers at the very least. You know, a lot so, of triggered abilities when your yeah. QD it was sitting in the in the format. And, yep. And right now we have defabricate still. So I mean, we still yeah. have those options. You know. Good card. But I th I think repulsive mutation is is highly slept on and um. I agree. Definitely a very good card for what it can do. Uh, agree. Sudden setback. I am super excited about this card. I think this card is amazing. It actually reminds me of what was the one from Gangs of New York? Um, it was the instant that did the same thing, or I put it back on top of it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm playing that right now. My Bant deck, but I mean, yeah, it costs three different mana. It does. So that's, that's the advantage of this one. Is it only costs blue? Usually, I don't like cards like this. However, any time an opponent has to put a card on the top of their deck that they already played, they probably want to play it again. And that buys me a turn to deal with it again. Kind of so that's why I put this on my list. Yeah, it's kind of time walking your opponent. That's why I put this on my list because um, I kind of like this card as just like a, a four minute time walk. I don't know that it's as good as like. Um, Oh, you know, the four mana counter. Uh, God, Mio, we were talking about it earlier. Devious cover-up, right? I don't think it's necessarily as good as Devious cover-up, but, you know, with rotation in nine months, like, this is a halfway bad card. So, I'm looking at this from a perspective of uh, what happened earlier. So, I was playing my Bant deck, and mm -hmm. I had to ferry out from Invasion New Phyrexia. And he had like yep. four counters on him. And they did, uh, was it Stoke the Flames or Cast the Fire? It had Convoke and deals five damage, I believe. Is that yeah. Stoke the Flames? So they played Stoke the Flames yes. to kill Teferi. And so I used that Bant card that we were talking about to just bounce him back to my hand. And then I was able to cast Invasion New Phyrexia again for X, bring out more creatures. So yep. Sudden Setback does the same thing. I can pick up my Planeswalker or my creature or my enchantment or my artifact. And put it back on top and draw. Mm -hmm. That's the good yep. thing about this card. So it's not just like putting your yeah, because you can target it's, your stuff. Correct. You're saving your stuff as well. Mm -hmm. And I think that's yeah, the part that's a good point. That's the thing that's like highly uh, not really looked at. And 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 don't get me wrong, like being able to like uh, they they cast Shieldred on turn four, and you're like, well, let's just go ahead and put that back on top. Let me draw a card. Mm -hmm. Oh, look at that. I got Disdainful Stroke. Go ahead and play Sh Sheldred again, mm -hmm. and we'll counter. Mm -hmm. Not only can you do that, but if I have a Sheldred, and they're like, go for the throat, I'm like, well, I'll just put her back on top. You know, because mm -hmm. I don't want to put go for the throat back on top. I'm just going to have you fizzle that instead. Mm -hmm. So I think that's where this card shines a lot more. And that's why, like, yeah. I, I love this card. Like, I'd, pl I'd probably play, like, a two of in, in a deck, yeah, honestly. Yeah, I think two's about right. Um. And, and just kind of test it there. If I don't feel like it's doing as much as I thought, then I'd probably put two in the sideboard. But I think this card's really good. I, I think it's really yeah, good. Yeah, I like it. I like uh, it. It's a decent card. Common, I think it's really good. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this is the one that I put that you scratched out. Um, so here's what I like about I like, this I like one. I um, emphasize that. Yeah, you just scratched it out. You're like, nah, fuck this card. Um, when this case ETBs, distribute two one one counters among one or two creatures you control. Um, that's not bad at a rate of three, and there are a lot of, we'll say, Selesnia one one uh, potential decks out there, right? Like the Selesnia one one counters deck has always wanted to be a thing, but never really had the support. But to solve this, creatures you control have total power eight or greater. That's actually that's not pretty easy. Yeah. No, it's not, and especially on an uncommon. That's that's pretty easy for a deck like that to do, especially at a three drop rate. Mm -hmm. um, and then once it's solved, when you attack, put a one one counter on target creature. It gains trample until end of turn. Yeah. So its solve condition is not difficult to achieve, and then a creature gets 1-1 one, one and trample. That's, that's not bad. 
No, not at all. Um, and I, I look at it. I, I'm I'm thinking of a couple other ways to do it too. Yeah, and I think a lot of the, like even, whether it's Lesnia one ones or some of the other decks that that just pump up like dinosaurs has a really easy job of meeting the solve condition. Um, the trample piece is the important part because those decks have struggled to push damage through. They can be heroic blocked. They can just be straight like chumped. But getting that trampled through on the yeah. solved condition, that's kind of a big deal. Yeah, it is. Do you think this could go into that Silesian Enchantment deck? Because like getting total eight power in that deck is too easy. Especially with Haunted. Oh, it's super enchantment. easy in that deck. Yeah. yeah, you're not wrong because as I mentioned before, the one and two drops are prolific. If you yeah, can drop yeah. a three drop like Case of the Trampled Garden, put a one one counter on something and then give a trample, that's kind of a big push. That's, I think that's one thing that the Lesnia deck has has always missed um, is trample. If that deck yes, had trample, I agree. It would it would be able to finish games uh, yep. that are that are uh, going long. Because well, and especially if you put it on something like. Oh, the white green creature with lifelink. With lifelink, yeah. So if that, exactly. yeah, if that dude had trample and lifelink, that's a bigger deal. Because you can give the Kami trample, but they just remove it, and he comes back. But then you got spend mana to cast him, and then build him up again with more spells, more enchantments. But if you can push through that trample damage on the 1-1... One, one, well... And even like the one drop spirit creature, um, if you can just push trample damage through with that sucker, you know, if you're doing uh, four or five trample damage, like that's that's a big deal. So I, I think this card has potential, and I think it fits into the Selesnia enchantments deck or or the dinosaurs decks. So I was yeah, I can see it in dinosaurs as well. The other thing I was looking at or thinking of right now is um I think this might be a better way to proc fight rigging because we all know that we have all the options. we have all the options that like you get a creature that has six six power and then you know at, at a three drop to yep. three and then you you fight rigging it gets yeah. a seven and then you proc it boom but because everybody yep. is so used to that if you drop a four four and people aren't expecting mm. fight rigging to go off the next turn or whatever you can play this. Yeah. Put two plus one plus one counters on making it six, proc the fight rigging, hitting seven, and then you went from four to seven hitting the to hitting the fight rigging. Really yeah. quick. Yeah. Yeah. So I, agree. I I think that there's there's a possibility for that. Um because you can just wait. Like you on turn two you, you drop a creature that's like a a three one, you know. And mm -hmm. then um or a two one or a two two. You can put down a two two. Mm -hmm. And then on turn three, you play fight rating. That creature goes to a three. Your opponent is like, okay, it's going to be a while before they get to seven. Sure. And then, all, and then all of a sudden, you know, the next turn, you can play this. And then, uh, or no, the creature would have to be a three, three. And then turn three, fight rating puts it to a four, four. That's what it is. And then yep. on turn, uh, yep. whatever's next, you play this, putting it to six, then proc that. Like, they just wouldn't see that line coming. Or turn four or five, you just drop this and then trigger the fight rigging. Correct. How, however, I don't play fight rigging as much, so I, I, I don't have it in my head. Oh, either. <laughs> but yeah, I think yeah. like that was the other route I was thinking is that it, it can just be hidden behind a fight rigging. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. to make it go off. Because yeah. I know for sure that if I see a, a creature that's five or higher, I have to get rid of fight rigging. But if I see a creature that's like two or three, I, fight rigging isn't a threat to me. All right, brother. Well, I think that brings us to the end of our review. Yeah. Um, well, I appreciate everybody stopping by. Again, check out my uh, other channel. It's a uh, Ronin TCG. Uh, it's a card game I've been working on for quite some time now. And uh, I, haven't put, I haven't updated any videos as much, but go check it out. And then you can check the website out as well at uh, ronintcg.com. Uh, tcgcom So I'm almost done with the set. It's going to be 200 cards. Link will be in the description. Yeah, uh, it's 200 cards, and there will be secret rares. And this is a strategy-based trading card game. It's not a deck builder. 
based around martial arts and fighting. Um, it has some mechanics from like Pokemon, Magic, and other like Hearthstone effects and things like that. So it is a strategic game. So check that out. Give it Good. a like, and uh, we'll go from there. So awesome. All right, everybody. I appreciate everybody stopping by. Paul, I appreciate it, homie. Absolutely. Anytime, home slice. All right, man. We'll catch you later. Peace. Peace.